Um, I think it's legitimizing this new asset class. Uh, so that's a very good thing. I think bringing in a new class of investor is important. And, you know, one of the reasons that we wanted to do a Bitcoin uh, ETF, even or spot Bitcoin ETF, even after um, we dis- we decided that it would probably be very low fee, given the way the competition was going to evolve. <laughs> In this video, Kathy Wood, founder and CEO of RC Investment Dodds, talks about why she thinks Bitcoin will go up a lot. ETF makers with a $1.5 million price target the video to see what she has to say about how important it is for people to use crypto and other things that get her excited in the business. Well, as I, as I just mentioned, I think, I think there's been a, a lot of communication about what Bitcoin actually is in this new asset class uh, leading the charge. I know that our research team, I know Yassin is there with you, um, has done an amazing job, uh, not only in the last six months or year, uh, but we've had research extending back to two 2014. Uh, and so, uh, and, and our first white paper in 2015 when we took our first exposure. Uh, and so we've been singing the praises of Bitcoin for a long time as a new asset class. So that's a start. But I do think there are some macro factors. I know Mike uh, mentioned this earlier. We're very focused on what's going on in the emerging markets uh, right now. I think um, with time, uh, many more people will understand that the Fed, with the 24-fold increase in interest rates over little more than a year's time, has absolutely shocked the financial system around the world. Now, many people are looking at very short-term lagging economic indicators here in the United States, primarily because the Fed is doing that. But if you look at other signals out there, there, um, there, there are um, um, signals that uh, not all is well in the world. I know Mike mentioned the the Nera, <clears throat> the Nigerian Nera, um, which has devalued tooth by two thirds since uh, last June. Now Nigeria is one of the wealthiest countries, oil rich in in Africa. And um, with a new administration that's become very business friendly, I think they thought they could let the currency float. And um, uh, and they found out, you know, that it has been very painful from a purchasing power point of view and from a point of view. Um, we've seen the same uh, in Egypt that the the Egyptian devaluation was uh, 40 percent at the beginning of March. Uh, so I think I think that there's a bit of a risk off reason for owning Bitcoin emanating from the emerging markets we've seen in Argentina with the new administration there. I, I think the, the the currency, I mean, they made official what the black market already knew that the currency was worth half of what it w- was reported at Lee worth. So I think we're getting those warning signals. I also think, you know, yesterday we got the Swiss bank cutting rates, which was a big surprise. The UK turning a little more dovish, the Fed now a little more dovish. Why? What are they seeing out there? Um, and so many people think of Bitcoin as a risk on asset, and it certainly has traded over, like that over time. Uh, but we have been looking at it as both risk on and risk off. Uh, and I can tell you when we first, uh, when we first learned that in 2015, uh, when we took our first position in uh, Bitcoin via GBTC, Bitcoin was about $250. And many people were making fun of us at the time, thinking, oh, they're they're new. We had just started our funds in October of 14. Oh, they're new. They're just trying to gain attention. This is a marketing gimmick. And so we were really on the spot. First of all, we had done a lot of 
research. We didn't think, uh, we thought there was real investment merit, but we were watching like a hawk its moves. And it, back then, uh, Greece was threatening to leave the European Union. And every time there was a flare up, uh, you know, and, and a fear of another European sovereign debt crisis, Bitcoin inched up. And so we've been looking at it both a risk on and a risk off asset for quite some time. And the regional bank crisis last year uh, kind of uh, confirmed uh, our, that point of view that here Bitcoin um, more than doubled, I think more than doubled as regional banks were imploding. So uh, I think many people are beginning to say, as they learn what this is, wow, could it be both a risk on and a risk off asset? We think so. Um, I think it's legitimizing this new asset class. Uh, so that's a very good thing. I think bringing in a new class of investor is important. And you know, one of the reasons that we wanted to do a Bitcoin uh, ETF, even or spot Bitcoin ETF, even after um, we dis we decided that it would probably be very low fee, given the way the competition was going to evolve, was, you know, we're looking at uh, Bitcoin as, you know, the technology as well. It is, you know, a financial superhighway, a public good. Uh, and so we think... Uh, educating and offering access to as many people as possible uh, in a less friction filled way. I mean, many people just didn't want to deal with, you know, uh, wallets and so forth is uh, is is going to, in hindsight, uh, and when history is written, I think is going to become a very mo important moment in time. Well, asymmetric, I mean, uh, uh, there aren't many assets out there that uh, I think can claim that they're both risk on and risk off. So uh, for that reason, um, uh, we think that uh, the, the, the return profile is going to be uh, certainly relative to anything else out there. You know, uh, Yasin and, and team have done the returns uh, to Bitcoin um uh, I think this, yes, is over the life of Bitcoin or um, I forget exactly. He'll he'll tell you the, the period of time that we did. We put in our big ideas uh, 2024. Um, and if you look at Bitcoin's compound annual rate of return, it's 44 percent over that time time versus I think it's four and a half percent for all other assets combined. Uh, so we think the superior returns uh, uh, are going to be there. This is the beginning. This is just the beginning of this new asset class. Um, yes, and the volatility is coming down. Um, as we look at, uh, are we going to have the same returns from peak to trough going forward? Perhaps not, um, but uh, we've come a long way and and we still think we have miles to go. Um, well, since we first, we were looking for exposure very early on, and the first exposure we could find was GBTC. But then, as time went on, um, of course, uh, public companies uh, uh, became available with some exposure to uh, to Bitcoin. Um, Coinbase, uh, actually, we had done our first, no, our second white paper with Coinbase when I think it was either doing it Series A or doing it Series B. Uh, so, you know, we were casting far and wide uh, for exposure to Bitcoin and we didn't have a private fund at the time like we do now. Um, so uh, Bitcoin, uh, Coinbase is now uh, obviously a big part of our portfolio, Square as well. Uh, Robinhood. So um, we're we're looking for the companies that could potentially have that uh, that digital wallet that is um, probably going to become a winner take most opportunity. And so you've got Coinbase coming at it from the crypto angle. You've got uh, 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 Robinhood coming at it from well, starting with equities and options and uh, Square with Cash App. So, um, yes, we're, we're doing that. We also have launched uh, some um, futures funds. Uh, uh, I think that's pretty well no known, three of which are actively managed. 
Uh, so one is Bitcoin Cash, uh, one is Bitcoin ETH, and these are all futures. And then one is Bitcoin and all of these digital wallet uh, opportunities, potentially. Uh, and then um, we also have uh, private funds, a cryptocurrency fund, a crypto revolutions fund, which will you know, which will take us far and beyond Bitcoin. So we're doing a lot and getting more and more excited about it. And uh, we now have four uh, four people, uh, including Yassine, focused uh, on this space. And one of them, uh, I might add, is David Puel. Many of you may know him if you are in, into on-chain analytics. Uh, some of them are named after him because he created them. We hired him uh, because... Uh, uh, we can tell a lot about the market. We do a Bitcoin min monthly piece examining the health of the network and where we are in the bull or the bear market, what phase we're in. We believe we're kind of in mid phase right now based on on-chain analytics. And on-chain analytics also help us with our trading strategies in active management. Trading VI data shows that the price of Bitcoin has gone up 68% since 2020. It now trades at around $66,000 less than three weeks left until the 201124 by 2028. Bitcoin would be worth $434,000 or $280 per coin, up from $66,000 now. Trends that copy Bitcoin's price increases have seen fewer and fewer benefits over time. For example, if they repeat the current pattern, Bitcoin would have gone from nothing to $12.50 in 2012 rising over 12,400% by 2020. It would then rise 5,000% to $650 and 1,000% to $88,500 by 2020. This lowers Bitcoin's average price rallies by 45% per cycle to 6.58%. Bitcoin prices will go up 360% in the next cycle, reaching $33,600 BTC in 2028. A strict quantitative analysis of the price pattern shows that there is no positive link between the event and the BTC price history. I want to have $435,000 by 2028, but I won't push myself if Bitcoin ETF passes gold ETF in two years. Eric Balonis, a research expert, says BTC could hit six figures. Bitcoin exchange traded funds, ETS, are growing faster than gold ETS did when they first came out in 2004. Bitcoin's value is rising five times faster than gold's. In the past 10 years, Bitcoin's growth has been a lot like gold's growth over the past 50 years. This is why some people get impatient, as the movie shows. Good job and subscribe to get new videos every day. Thanks for watching.